word doula comes from the ancient Greek meaning, a woman who serves. It was first used by medical anthropologist Dana Raphael in her 1973 book, The Tender Gift, Breastfeeding, to refer to a woman who provided postpartum care. As a result of the pioneering work of doctors Marshall Klaus and John Kennel, the meaning of the word doula has expanded beyond postpartum support to include support in the prenatal time and during childbirth. We started out in Guatemala because we wanted to change a nursery. We thought that this would be an ideal place to put mothers and babies together when they are born. Could we enhance breastfeeding simply by putting the mother and baby together in a sensitive period? In those days, babies and mothers were separated in the most fancy nurseries. And so this was an effort to bring the baby to the mother. And it needed to be proven in American hospitals in order to show that it makes sense. Our associate, a medical student, we had her interview all of the mothers, uh, a very short interview, and find out if they approved of the study and when we got to the 10th patient, we learned that she had stayed with every mother. And, and this seemed to have a very salutary effect because these were first time mothers. They had very short labor and something happened when they had a person with them all the time who spoke fluent Spanish by accident, we had put an, an, a non-trained doula with them and, and got a very different result from birth. So then we decided to hire three established uh, women to stay with the mother. And then we discussed what training they should have. We gave them the training and then they, they were our first doulas. And uh, that's how we started. We were learning at that time about some of the almost magical outcomes uh, that happen in childbirth when there's support. The family thinks their baby is cuter and smarter than other babies. Women like their partners better. Hi, baby girl. Hey. Hi. Yeah. Hi. That's your daddy and your mom. Hi, hey, sweetheart. Aww. Women have always surrounded women in childbirth. As recent as 100 years ago, 90% of births took place at home. In most of those births, the laboring mother would have been supported by a sisterhood made up of perhaps neighbors, sisters, mothers, and friends. Women were supported emotionally, physically, and spiritually. It used to be common for a woman to have witnessed many births before she was having her first baby. This gave her a greater degree of comfort, knowledge, perspective, and experience that benefited her in her own birthing experiences. I would go back to thinking about 100 years ago, the mother who was in, having in, was in labor for her first baby, She'd be in a nice bed in her home, often the very best bed in the house, and she would have very often um, women in the neighborhood who might have been present at a good many deliveries, might be someone who had had several babies herself, maybe had been with many mothers. Mothers delivering at home were in a familiar place with familiar people, but an awful lot of it was sort of friendly talking and sympathizing with the mother's pains. What I learned was that women don't forget their birth experiences and that how they're cared for is something that we can control. We can't control how long labor is going to be or if it's going to be difficult or what. We can control how we care for women. And I looked around and I saw nursing shortages. I saw uh, busy, busy practices. And I thought, we need someone who can just be there to care for the woman emotionally and physically. A birth doula is there to support a couple during pregnancy um, and then during childbirth with their wishes, what they would like to have um, in their experiences that the doula will try to see that that comes about. 
within the parameters of the medical profession. Although we appreciate the advances that modern medicine affords us, we must consider some important facts. Since 1970, in the United States alone, the cesarean section rate climbed from 5.5% to over 30% and rising, with no decrease in maternal or infant mortality. This is true in most countries around the world. The World Health Organization states that there is no justification for cesarean rates that exceed 10 to 15 percent in any industrialized country. Higher rates expose mothers and babies to greater risk. Studies have shown that birth doulas reduce the use of intervention. Knowing that intervention increases risks for mother and baby, it's important to recognize the wonderful impact that birth doulas can have on the birth experience. Postpartum doulas have been shown to increase the bonding connection between a mother and her baby and reduce the incidence of postpartum depression. The postpartum doula comes in after the birth to help them transition into being a family. She will help with education, support, um, whatever they need that is non-medical. Dona International carefully considered the code of ethics and scope of practice set forth for birth and postpartum doulas. They were designed to clarify the doula's role in birth and postpartum, providing structure to services rendered, the limits to doula practice, and the essential training and experience to be effective in this role. The value of the scope of practice speaks to the role of the doula in the sense that the, the doula has the four elements of care, being emotional support, informational support, the physical comfort measures, and also the um, advocacy in the sense that we're there to support the mother and care for the mother as part of the team. And that's the difference in that the medical part of the team has to care for the health of the mother and the baby and therefore the doula complements that role. I think the quality of the presence obviously must reduce stress, must create that sort of holding safe environment for a woman to work with her body. And I like to think of the um, both obstetrically, there have been incredibly wonderful results, and uh, behaviorally women feel better about themselves, they feel closer to their baby, uh, babies benefit from having less drugs and less uh, possibly separation because of surgery and so on of the mother. And um, psychologically, many women, uh, who especially if they've had any difficulty in their own childhood, there's the potential for an internal reorganization and feeling, um, have a higher self-esteem, more sense of confidence, feeling good about themselves, feeling good about the, the whole experience. So if you look at all of these factors, the purpose of this role, it, in some ways it's um, an essential ingredient of childbirth rediscovered because in ancient times there were always loving women around women giving birth. And a lot of that was taken away when women came into hospital. And so, especially in the United States, where there's much more of a, had been much more of a sterile, separate environment of mother, baby, even partner, um, this was a way to bring this back together. But it had so many powerful results. So I think this is what we've learned from this, is, you know, again, physiologically, emotionally, behaviorally, and psychologically, it's a pretty powerful role. I think a lot of mothers are fearful of having somebody else interfere in this special time. And they don't realize how great this emotional support, that it's, it's just unbelievable. As a nurse, I thought I could handle it all myself. And I realize now when I know what doulas do, oh, how I would have loved to have had doulas uh, help at my birth. I think um, one of the reasons why Dona was founded was to really nurture and protect the role of emotional support uh, during labor. I think that the role that we've set up for the doula, offering non-medical care to families in birth and postpartum, is the role I'd like to see continue in the future. It really helps keep the role of the doula distinct 
from other care providers, from the nurse, from the midwife, from the doctor. And I think it's um, a role that serves families very well. I think the doulas have shown very, very clearly how essential they are for mothers. The women who, who were doulas then and the women that become doulas all the way along usually have this great drive to help other women and uh, to think of their needs. The doulas have the spirit to stick with the mother. For parents that are considering hiring a doula, I would encourage them to ask the questions of the doula as to what her role is as she sees it, what can she do to support them, what her standards are in her own organization, what her service is going to be for them, and what the fees are for those services, but also to interview more than one person and to meet more than one person because the connection is so important, the heart and the caring experience is very important, but the connection has to be there. I think the most important thing for families when they're looking at hiring a doula is to talk with them, not necessarily all the details about what they believe in or what their philosophy is as a doula, but to just have a general sense of, does this doula seem like someone we want to have in our home, someone we want to share this most incredible time with, because they don't get the time back again. Their gut instinct should tell them everything. If the doula is truly there for them, it'll be apparent. I, I'm very hopeful that we'll see a change that people who are probably aren't born yet will maybe undertake to really look back at what happened in the 20th century and what's happening now with childbirth. We've got to try, try, try to get every mother a doula and we've got to think of ways to help mothers and to get back to what was available to most mothers when I was born. Dona International is the collective energy of passionate and motivated members who care deeply about the emotional experience of families. Dona International embodies the belief that nurturing and supporting women through their transition to motherhood will have a long-lasting positive effect on society. Blood.